Right now is a great time to jump into The Elder Scrolls Online. Whether you're brand new to the game or you haven't played in a while, thanks to the release of the new Elder Scrolls Online Necrom chapter, and especially ESO's newest class released as a part of that chapter, The Arcanist. The Arcanist is definitely one of my favorite ways to play ESO right now, and while the class is easy to pick up and play right out of the box, there's also plenty of advanced tips and tricks that make this class even more powerful when you learn how to play it to its full potential, which I'm going to explain for you in this video. Special thanks to Bethesda for sponsoring this video, and if you'd like to learn more about the Necrom chapter and the Arcanist class, be sure to check out their link down in the description. So how do you play the Arcanist? Well, as ESO's seventh class, the Arcanist has elements that should be familiar to any experienced ESO player. Things like dedicated skill lines for damage dealing, tanking, and healing. But the Arcanist also features many new elements that make playing the class feel fresh and unique even for ESO veterans. The Arcanist was literally designed to play differently from any other class in the game, and it shows. I've actually really been enjoying it. First of all, the Arcanist class skill lines are amazing, each with its own cosmic horror vibe or insane visual effects, all linked to the lore and aesthetic of one of my favorite Daedric princes in the Elder Scrolls lore, Hermaeus Mora. For example, you have Herald of the Tome. This is your DPS skill line, which has you opening up the Black Books of Apocrypha to fire off deadly runes and even laser beams for huge bursts of damage. Or if you want, just transform your arm into a giant tentacle to root enemies in place, cause them to take even more damage from your attacks. Now we'll get into how to optimize your damage on the Arcanist in just a minute here, but it is definitely one of the best DPS classes in the game, especially if you like a simplified rotation and you don't have end game gear yet. Trust me, you don't need any of that stuff to do great damage on the Arcanist. Then of course there is a tank skill line, this is called Soldier of Apocrypha, and this offers plenty of crowd control and defensive options, like summoning powerful runes of protection for you and your group, an option to greatly debuff a single enemy, or you can even charm them to take them out of the fight completely, plus an in-class taunt skill that's going to be amazing if you would like to create some more interesting builds where you don't necessarily need a sword and a shield or an ice staff to be an effective tank. And then there's the Curative Rune Forms skill line. This offers some amazing healing and support options. Here you actually have group damage shields. You've got a ground-based heal and a damage buff, plus the ultra-powerful Remedy Cascade skill. This is a healing beam that you can focus on allies for massive healing over time. Of course, all three class lines have very powerful ultimate skills too, though I'd have to say my favorite would be Sanctum of the Abyssal Sea. This is going to grant you one of the biggest damage shields in the game, and then it's going to damage enemies for the same amount of damage after it breaks. Really cool stuff. In this video, we'll go over the best skills in each class skill line, but before we do that, there is one more key element to playing the Arcanist class that you need to understand to truly maximize your potential, and that is building and spending Crux. Now the Crux system is yet another unique mechanic built into the Arcanist class that sets it apart from other classes in ESO, allowing you to build up bonus points during combat that supercharge your abilities, make them even stronger, or add bonus effects. And don't worry, this is actually very easy to do and it comes naturally as you are playing and you're in combat. You can actually see Crux being built up on your character. Just look for these bright green triangles spinning around so you don't need to worry about buff timers or tracking icons, though you can use those elements as well. But this is what Crux looks like, and you start with zero and you can build up to a maximum of three. The way this works is that some Arcanist skills are builders, adding to your overall Crux count, while other Arcanist skills are spenders. When you use these skills, they consume any Crux you have built up, whether it's one, two, or three total Crux, and spending those extra Crux gives you that extra damage, some extra healing or other bonus effects. Like I said, when you're actually playing the class, this comes very naturally. And technically speaking, you don't even need to use the Crux mechanic in order to play, but I highly recommend you do because it makes your skills so much more powerful. So let's look at a simple skill combo on the Arcanist class to see how this works. Now, one of your most powerful skills on the Arcanist class is called Fate Carver, that channeled laser beam attack that we talked about earlier. I personally like the Pragmatic Fate Carver morph as this makes the beam uninterruptible and also gives you a bonus damage shield, so this is going to be especially good for newer players if you want to maximize your survival. But if you look closely at the tooltip here, we can see casting this ability consumes all crux and increases damage done by 33% and decreases cost by 16% per crux spent. 
So the fact that this skill can consume crux means it is one of those spender skills that we mentioned earlier that gets empowered based on how many crux we have built up. And the bonus here is actually massive, almost 100% bonus damage and almost 50% cost reduction if you have that maximum of three crux stacked. Of course, like we said, you don't need to stack three crux in order to use this skill. You can still cast it even if you have zero crux, but to get the most potential damage on your Arcanist, you'll definitely want to build up as many crux as possible. And speaking of builders, there's plenty of options here to get you to that all important three crux maximum. One of the earliest and simplest ways to stack crux is actually your first damage skill called Rune Blades. In whichever morph you choose, this skill is going to generate one crux each time you cast it successfully in combat. So having just my first two damage skills unlocked, Rune Blades and Fate Carver, you can easily get to three crux to literally double the power of that Fate Carver beam. So just to show you here at base on my Arcanist bow build, I'm doing about 3000 damage or 6000 if I critically strike. But when I build up to that three crux maximum, my damage essentially doubles here to around 6,000 base damage or 12,000 critical damage, which is a huge difference. Also worth noting here is that the skill icon in your skill bar for any spender skill is gonna light up when it's at full three crux, which is another helpful visual hint. So whether you're looking at your character and counting those three floating green triangles, or you're just looking at your skill bar, there is gonna be some good visual indicators either way. Also, you should note that any builder skill is gonna have an upward arrow or rune image on the icon itself, meaning that this will build crux for you, though they don't light up the same way that spender skills do. But as you can see, there's tons of possibilities here, and the more you practice and perfect your build, the stronger it can get. So what other builders and spenders can you combo up on the Arcanist? Well, in terms of builders, there's actually a wide variety here, which is great because it means that no matter what playstyle you want to do, you can still build up those crux. In Herald of the Tome, we already mentioned Rune Blades is a builder skill. But there's also Cephaliarch's Flail, for example, which roots enemies in place, heals you, debuffs enemies, and also generates one crux per cast, which is awesome. And one of my favorite Arcanist skills, Tome Bearer's Inspiration, which buffs your damage at all times with Major Sorcery and Major Brutality, two very important buffs. But this also generates one crux by default as soon as you spend your crux on another ability. So if we go back to our first example of using rune blades to build crux, we can totally mix things up if we want. I mean, instead of using just rune blades, I could buff with Tome Bear's inspiration for my first crux, then cast rune blades from a distance as combat starts for my second crux, and then finally root enemies in place with the tentacle, and I'm already at three stacks and ready to beam with my Fate Carver ability. So each of the three Arcanist skill lines has its own builders too. Some of my other favorites include Crux Weaver Armor from the Soldier of Apocrypha skill tree. This skill builds up Crux whenever you take damage. And from the Curative Rune Forms skill tree, two really good options here. Rune Mend number one, this builds Crux whenever you heal. And the Chakram of Destiny skill builds up Crux and creates a damage shield for you and your group. Now on the other hand, Spender skills for the Arcanist class are a bit more strategic in nature, so you're going to have less of these types of skills overall. Fate Carver is obviously the real star here, which we already talked about. Most builds are going to be using this as their main Spender, unless you're just a pure tank build or a pure healer build, of course. But one more great option, again from Herald of the Tome, is the Magicka Morph of Abyssal Impact. This is called Tentacular Dread. Now, this skill does bonus damage and debuffs the enemy, making them take even more damage based on the amount of crux you have stacked when you cast. In the tank skill line, you have Rune Spite Ward, a very powerful damage shield, but this can also add a strong heal on top of the shield if you have crux built up. And then there's the Remedy Cascade skill from the healing skill line. This is a very strong heal over time, but if you have crux to spend, it's going to also restore resources to your allies as well. So as we said, lots of great options and great combinations, no matter how you like to play. But as I said, Crux is just one of many new ESO mechanics that makes the Arcanist play and feel so uniquely different than anything else in the game.
is something that you'll actually want to pay special attention to, especially as you level up your Arcanist, is how the cost of some abilities actually change dynamically. This means that many of your primary skills on the Arcanist can actually change their cost, either Stamina or Magicka, based on whichever resource is highest for your build. The first two damage skills in the Herald of the Tome skill line, that being Rune Blades and Fate Carver, are a perfect example of this idea. Basically, if your build has more max Magicka, those skills will cost Magicka to cast. And likewise, if you have more max Stamina, they will instead cost Stamina to cast. This is stated in the tooltips, by the way, but I know some players will miss it. Now, this is actually a really interesting concept, I think, because with many of ESO's previous classes, their morph options are pretty basic. I mean, you might have one morph that costs Stamina to cast and the other morph costs Magicka, with minimal differences other than that basic fact. But now that the ESO devs were able to get around this on the Arcanist, this is actually great because it means that change of resource is already built into the base skill itself, and the morph options here can then become more focused and more interesting. Just be careful, as I said, especially early on, because if you all of a sudden equip an item with a little bit extra max magicka or a little bit extra max stamina, and that extra stat boost ends up changing whatever your max resource is, suddenly all of your main skills will cost a different resource than they did previously, which can be confusing if you don't know what's going on. There's even more mastery built into the Arcanist class that I'm still discovering, especially as it relates to the Arcanist channeled abilities like Fade Carver and Remedy Cascade. For example, if you'd like to queue up your next ability, you can actually do that while the channeled effect is still in progress. Simply click on your next skill while you're channeling the beam at any point, and that new skill will fire off in sequence right after the channeled effect ends. This all happens very smoothly as well, and you can actually see the next skill activate as you press it to get it set up in the queue. And if you need to end a channeled skill early for any reason, that can be done in several ways. One is by just tapping the block button. See, as soon as I tap block, my Fate Carver beam stops. Another option is going to be activating a roll dodge. This is going to be great for getting out of trouble and putting some more distance between you and an enemy because you are a bit slower while you are channeling that beam effect. And the third option is just going to be a simple bar swap. So pressing your bar swap button, whatever that is, that is going to end the channeled beam skill as well. Again, this is all very smooth and it works flawlessly. So you can get back full control of your character if you ever need to in an emergency don't feel like you're stuck in the beam. Another tip here is you can even use the base game combat setting called ability bar timers to get a countdown effect on your skill bar so you can see when Fate Carver or Remedy Cascade is about to end. You can do this without any add-ons at all, so this is a perfect option for console players as well. And finally, this should be turned on by default, but just so you're aware that it exists, ESO did actually introduce a new auto-aim assist feature as well, and this is going to be located in the game's setting. You should be able to find this under Accessibility and Arcanist Aim Assist. So basically, this makes the beam attacks sort of stick to your target a little bit more, which is actually really helpful, but it also does slow down your ability to quickly turn your camera and change targets, which could be a potential downside, I think, especially in PvP. So you will want to adjust this as needed to suit your particular play style. Again, I think for most content, it will be useful to keep it turned on. And this is going to help you not need to worry so much about your aim with those channeled effects. But that is it. Literally everything you need to know to excel at playing ESO's newest class, the Arcanist. The Arcanist class is exclusively available via the Elder Scrolls Online Necrom chapter, available right now on PC and coming to Xbox and PlayStation June 20th. Obviously, this is a huge new feature for the game. You'll already be able to find guides and builds over on my website. That's hacktheminotaur.com. But that's not all you can access with the Necrom chapter. There's going to be plenty of new quests, new territory to explore, including the Telvanni Peninsula zone in Morrowind, and my favorite new zone for ESO. That's Hermaeus Mora's Realm of Apocrypha. I did an entire spoiler-free preview of that zone. I'll have it linked right here if you want to check it out. I definitely recommend that. There's also insane new world events in Apocrypha. Those are called Bastion Nimix. There's the new 12 player trial, Sanity's Edge to explore, and also two new companions ready to join you. That's a Xandar and Sharp as Night. So tons of new content, no matter what you're interested in. You can use my link down below in the description or the pinned comment to get started. Thanks again to Bethesda for sponsoring this video. I hope you're doing well, stay safe out there, and I will see you around 
in the next video.